In this video, we are going to look at the conduction emission when you have multiple noise sources connected to the same listen. You probably already know how to set up and measure the conducting emission of one noise source. But what if you have two noise sources, such as in this case, two switchable power supplies, same type, same load, but connected to the listen. The setup we have, we have a receiver, we have a bench top conducting emission setup by using two listens, and we also have a transient limiter on the input of the receiver. So that means the results we get will have 10 dB offset. What we're going to do is we're going to perform a conducting emission test on one switchable power supply, and then we connect the other switchable power supply, compare the results, and analyze the results. So let's begin. At this point, some of you probably already know the answer. You probably say, oh, the results would be um, increased emissions and increased by certain dB. But hold your thoughts for now. Before we make the measurement, let's go to the theory first. In this case, we are using a benchtop DC conducting emission setup by using two listens. But instead of feeding a noise source like a switchable power supply, in this case, we're just feeding signals directly from a functional generator. As you can see here, we enabled two channels, and channel two is tracking channel one, meaning those channels output exactly the same signals. And the signal we feed into the listen is a square wave shape with a 110 kilohertz switching frequency, four nanoseconds rise time, and um, 100 millivolts peak to peak voltage on both channels. And we'll, what we are going to do is first we measure the peak scanning of one channel, and then we add another channel to the listen, and then we add we measure the result when you have two signals adding together, feeding a signal to the listen, and we're going to compare the frequency scanning result on the receiver. Okay, so let's do it. We just use peak hold to measure and save the results when we have only one output. Then we add the second channel. We do the same again, peak hold, and we compare the results. The blue trace shows the result of one channel whereas the red one shows the result of two channels feeding into the same listen. Red trace shows higher amplitudes compared to the blue trace, but by how much? Let's have a quick look. So if we narrow the frequency down from, for example, 100k to 1 meg first, okay, so this would give us a better uh, view of it, and then we can then measure the difference between the amplitude. So for example, we just pick the second harmonic of the switching frequency, say this is marker 1, and then we add another delta marker on the blue trace, make sure that they sit in the same frequency. Okay, so that gives me um, the delta difference between the two peak at about 4.7 dB microvolts. Okay, so that's the second harmonics. Uh, let's try another one, maybe the third harmonics. Let's see, in this case, it's about uh, minus 3.9 3 dB microvolts. So that's in the lower frequency range. We can see that the combined um, results has about 3 to 4 dB microvolts higher than just one, one channel. And the question is, does this rule apply to higher frequency then? So we can then go to higher frequency, right? Forget about the marker, but just from the amplitude point of view, you can also see that in the higher frequency range, in this case, 50 megahertz to about 51 megahertz, the red trace also is higher, shows higher amplitude compared to the blue trace, and it's about 3 dB mic microvolts-ish. And this all makes sense, right, because when you have two uncorrelated wideband noise sources, such as this channel one and channel two, you add them together so the power adds up. If the power adds up, that means the resulting noise amplitude will be increased by a factor of square root of two. So in other words, 1.414 times 
and that is about 3 dB in terms of dB microvolts. Now the question is, would this rule apply if I test two DC-DC converters, as I showed you earlier on? Let's find out. Now we're going to use the same approach to measure the converter. This picture shows the conducting emissions of three configurations, right? So we had the blue and green traces are the results of converter 1 and converter 2, whereas the red trace is the conducting emission of two converters connected to the lism. From this, you can't really tell um, the details. Therefore, I'm going to zoom in to certain frequency range. We start from the lower frequency range first. So if I start between 100k and 1 megahertz, and it is quite clear to me that the conducting emissions of two converters actually is not larger than that of converter 1 or converter 2. In fact, the conducting emission seems pretty much the same and that is in lower frequency range. How about higher frequency range? So if we do perhaps 10 megahertz to 11 megahertz, again, similar trend, similar trend. How about even higher frequency range, say 50 megahertz to 51 megahertz? Again, pretty much the same. So this is quite surprising as the conducting emission of two converters actually is no different with the emission of one converter. So why is that then? In order to answer that question, let's do one trick. As you can see here, I'm now zoom in to only look at the fundamental switching frequency. Okay, and we can see the starting frequency is 100 kilohertz, and we stopped at 130k. The shape is looks like looks like this is because we set up the resolution bandwidth in this case 10 kilohertz. If I now start to reduce the resolution bandwidth, you can see the waveform now start to change. If I reduce it to a very small value, for example at 100 hertz, if I add a marker. And I'll put marker on the green trace. And you know what? I will track maximum value. The maximum frequency actually shifts if you look at the switching frequency. Rather than stay at 114.4 kilohertz, sometimes it goes to 114.5, sometimes goes to 114.4. And this is what we call drift. So that means the converter we are looking at, in this case converter 1, it's not really switching at a fixed frequency. It has some drift. The drift in this case is 0 0.1, 0 0.2 kilohertz. That is quite big. Think about it. It's about 100 hertz on the fundamental switching frequency. Think what's going to happen in higher harmonics. 9th harmonics, 11s, 13s, or 30s. That is in the higher frequency range, right? And that drift would be much more than this, okay? And because of this drift issue, when you add two converters together, you are almost as if you are adding two white noise together. Therefore, you are not really summing up the power as what we had demonstrated in the, in the theoretical case. This is the reality. When you add these two together, it's not adding up the power as you think. If you remember, we've done a video on the spread spectrum. This is not really as extreme as the spread spectrum, but the first principle is the same. By spreading that energy, you know, in a small window, your amplitude actually is now reduced. Finally, we do another test, which is we swapped the loads of one converter. So this one would be 
uh, heavy loads compared to that one. So this one would draw much more current than that one. And then we again uh, look at the emissions and compare. This is the result again by using 10 kilohertz resolution bandwidth. It is interesting to see that the again in terms of the emission, if you look at here, the conducted emissions of two converters in this case actually is lower than that of the high power converter. But here it is higher, but then here is lower again. So again, it's not as simple as you can just add things up. Let's try higher frequency. So for example, we can go to f perhaps 50 meg to 70 meg to see. Yeah, so in this case, 50 megahertz to 70 megahertz, the two converter emissions only start getting sort of higher from maybe 60 megahertz. Most of the time it stays pretty much the same as the high power load. Again, in the lower frequency range between 100k and 150k, if we reduce the resolution bandwidth and do an, another scan, you will then see the difference, right? So this is why when you add two emissions together, the overall results showing in red is actually, in terms of amplitudes, is less than that of the high power load. In our next episode, we're going to explore the cascaded power supply configuration. So this power supply would power will give power to this power supply. And then we're going to explore the relationship in terms of the overall conducting emission compared to individual conducting emission. So stay tuned.